Hello Legionnaires and welcome to another character creation video. This video continues my four part series that dives into the character creation process for Free League Publishing's Mutant series. Mutant Year Zero, Mutant Gen Lab Alpha, Mutant Mechatron, and Mutant Elysium. Please note the characters I create are all organically created and viable within the spirit of the game. I do not focus on optimization, nor do I cater to the whole play against type nonsense. Additionally, this video is strictly a character creation video. It's not game mechanics, setting, or game lore video. I will not dive down those rabbit holes here. The character creation process is similar for each Mutant Year Zero game, as each game is intended to be compatible and used with the others. If you watched the previous video where I made a character for Mutant Year Zero, there will definitely be some deja vu moments for you. With that said, there are also some striking differences that set the creation of the mutant animals of Mutant Gen Lab Alpha apart from the mutant humans of Mutant Year Zero. If you like these character creation videos and want to see more of them, please dominate that like button and leave a substantive comment below. Be sure to subscribe to Legion Myth for more tabletop RPG videos and to be notified of our Twitch and YouTube live streams. You can see our current schedule as the date of this recording on the screen right now. I look forward to chatting with you there. All right, let's begin. In Mutant Gen Lab Alpha, character creation is a 14 step process where each step builds upon the previous one. This process includes two more steps than Mutant Year Zero, but it does not have the lengthy face building step. In Gen Lab Alpha, step 11 is the one that takes the most time because it is dependent upon collaboration with the other players at the table. With that said, once you understand the simple but effective Year Zero Engine rules, you can easily make a character in 5 to 10 minutes, tops. So let's take a look at these 14 steps. First, pick the animal type. Then pick the animal role. Choose a name and describe the character's appearance. Choose the character's age. Distribute the attribute dice based on the age. Distribute the skill dice based on the character's age. Choose one talent based on the role. Choose two animal powers based on the animal type. Determine the character's rank within the animal tribe based on the character's age and role. Define the character's relationship with the other PCs in the group as well as with two NPCs. Choose the character's big dream. Select the character's gear based on the role and describe the character's den. The character's home in Paradise Valley. It sounds like a lot more work than it is, so let's go over this step by step starting with step one. In step one, you choose the character's animal type. This animal type determines to which tribe the character belongs, the character's key attribute, the selection of animal powers, how the character recovers from instinct attribute loss, and the character's naming convention or the lab name. Don't worry, I will go over each and every one of these concepts at the appropriate time. The important thing to know is the character's animal type is the most important decision you'll make for the character, even more important than the character's role. As you can see on the screen, there is some variation within the animal types. For example, the dog type includes dogs, foxes, and wolves. I selected the rat animal type for this character. Specifically, she is going to be a squirrel. The rat or squirrel's key attribute is agility, and I'll just make a note of this for later. In step two, you'll choose a role. Roles are similar to character classes, professions, or archetypes in other games, and will determine the character's special skill, second key attribute, and a list of three role-based talents from which the player can choose one and the character's starting gear. There are five roles in Mutant Gen Lab Alpha. Healer, Hunter, Scavenger, Seer, and Warrior. Since this is not a System Fundamentals video, I'm not going to detail the various roles here, but you should know that once the characters are able to leave Paradise Valley and enter the world of Mutant Year Zero, those original eight Mutant Year Zero roles become available to Mutant Gen Lab Alpha characters, and vice versa. The role I selected for this squirrel was Scavenger. 
I mean, it's good to have a character who mysteriously seems to always have the right tool for the right job, right? The key attribute for the scavenger is wits, which I will discuss later in step six. And the role special skill, the skill only a scavenger can have is scavenge. <laughs> we'll talk more about that in step seven. For now, let's move on to step three, where I name the character. This character is a squirrel, and squirrels are part of the rat tribe. In Gen Lab Alpha, rats are named after famous composers. Examples in the book include Vivaldi 67, Mozart 44, Mendelssohn 33, Rachmaninoff 83. I like the idea of Fanny Mendelssohn for a female squirrel, but the Mendelssohn name itself isn't what I'm going for. Instead, I went with the first name and just designated her Fanny. 05. As a rodent, and as a scavenger who's always on the lookout for something interesting, I picture Fanny as someone whose eyes and ears never stop moving until something catches her attention, at which time she'll laser focus on that object or scene. She's slightly overweight, but this doesn't stop her from scurrying around to find her next treasure. Fanny wears a poncho over what looks to be an old field jacket liner. She has camouflage pants with a handful of cargo pockets over which she wears one red knee pad and a pair of blue galoshes, or rain boots. On her head, she often wears a gray beanie that almost seems to blend in with her fur. So far, I've selected animal type, role, name, and description. It's not much, but this will provide the foundation for the upcoming steps. With that in mind, let's take a quick look at the character sheet. There's not much to say at this point. I simply wrote what you saw in the previous slides and what I previously discussed. You can't see it here, but I did write in the scavenge skill into the skill list as well. You'll see that when I cover skills in step seven. For now, let's move on to step five and figure out Fanny's age. Fanny tries hard to be an overachiever. She's a bit energetic and maybe overly chipper when it comes to curios. This is likely due to her youthful age. Let's jot down that she's a youngster and move on to the next step. Mutant Gen Lab Alpha characters have four attributes, strength, agility, wits, and instinct. These attributes form the base of the character's skills and actions where each attribute point indicates one six-sided die. For example, a player character with a strength attribute rating of 3 rolls 3 base dice when attempting a feat of strength. A character with a wits attribute rating of 5 rolls 5 base dice when, re when performing a feat of wits. Secondarily, any time the character suffers damage, fatigue, confusion, or doubt, those injuries reduce the attribute rating and thus the amount of dice the player can roll to perform those actions. Again, this is a character creation video, not a fundamentals video, so I'm not going to dive into that any further. Just know that your attribute values affect the number of dice you roll to succeed at actions. Also know that as a rat, Fanny recovers trauma to the instinct attribute by burrowing into the ground or hiding in a dark spot. She recovers her animal instinct by acting like her animal type. This is only true of trauma to instinct, not to any of the other attributes. As a youngster, Fanny 05 starts with 15 attribute points to spread between her four attributes. The character can start with a minimum of two points and a maximum of four points in each attribute, with the exception of the key attribute, which can start with five points. However, note, while any key attribute can start with an attribute score of five, only one key attribute can start with an attribute score of five. You will have to select which attribute, if any, you want to be allotted five dice if you have more than one key attribute. The rat's key attribute is agility, and the scavenger's key attribute is wits, so Fanny's agility or wits can start with a maximum of five dice, while the other three attributes are capped at four dice. You can see the distribution of the attributes I chose for Fanny on the right-hand side of the screen. Fanny 05, our squirrel scavenger, has a strength rating of three base dice, an agility rating of four base dice, a wits rating of five base dice, and an instinct rating of three base dice. All right, so let's continue on to step seven, skills. There are 12 basic skills in the game, three skills for each of the four attributes. Any character can learn these 12 basic skills. 
There's also one additional skill, a special skill, which is determined by the character's role. This special skill can only be learned by a character of that specific role. This gives every character a total of 13 skills to use in the game. If you have not played a Year Zero Engine game before, know that those 13 skills really do cover any action you may want to perform. Each skill point indicates one six-sided die. These skill dice are added to the character's attribute dice when rolling dice to determine the success or failure of an action. The number of skill points a starting character has is based on the character's age. As a youngster, Fanny only has a total of 8 points to spend across those 13 skills. Don't worry though, from these humble beginnings, Fanny can grow into an amazing character. There are only 3 rules with regard to spending these skill points. You may spend from 0 to 3 points on any individual skill. However, you must put a minimum of 1 point into the character's special skill. And you may spend a total of 8, 10, or 12 skill points across all skills as determined by the character's age. Fanny loves to collect items of interest and place them in her duffel bag. She may not always know what those items are or how to use them, but she has them, and you'll be happy she has them when you're in a pickle. I can picture her constantly flittering from place to place, a tree branch here, a rooftop there, all in the hopes of finding her next curio. To facilitate this, I gave her one point in the scout skill, and two points in both the sneak and the move skills. This will help her to find and get to hard to reach places, and hopefully do so without alerting any of those pesky watchers. She's certainly not a brawler, I mean, leave that to the bears and the moose, right? but I did put one point into her shoot skill. Finally, I put the last two points into her special skill, Scavenge. Scavenge is an interesting skill that allows Fanny to find the right tool for the job. Oh, the tool's in bad shape, so it's only good for this one-time use, but it does provide a gear bonus, a number of bonus dice, to the skill roll for the action in which the item is used. Now we get to pick a talent. Talents are described as special abilities, something you and no one else can do. As a starting character, I get to pick one talent from a list of three talents provided by the scavenger role. Scavengers have the option of hideout, which provides a bonus to scavenging, but only at the character's secret hideout. In addition, it allows the character to replenish her carried stash if it's lost, stolen, left behind, so forth. Then there's the scrounger talent, which allows Fanny to use her wits instead of her strength when it comes to encumbrance and how many items she can carry. Finally, there's the Weapons Collector talent. This talent provides a bonus to the character's scavenge roll to find a weapon in the character's hoard. Knowing the importance of encumbrance in the mutant games and how scavengers can spend successes to add scavenged items to the character's inventory, I chose Scrounger. Plus, I think it fits Fanny 05 as a character. Mutant Gen Lab Alpha is all about playing mutant animals in Paradise Valley. Here in Step 9, I get to pick two animal powers for Fanny. There are 21 animal powers in the book, of which rats have access to 9. Flight Response, Burrower, Climber, Small, Silent, Nocturnal, Sixth Sense, Herbivore, and Tail. Each animal power is excellent, but I can only select two. So I went with Climber and Tail. For Climber, Fanny can spend one feral point to climb into a tree or even up walls and the sides of buildings as long as there are small crevices to grip. She could also spend one feral point to avoid combat without making a move roll, as long as there are trees or buildings for her to climb to safety. Tail is an enhancing power. This means the power is used to enhance another action. Tail can enhance a move action to jump, climb, or perform an acrobatic feat. Every feral point you spend provides a plus two dice bonus to the move roll. Tail is also used in dominance conflict. This is the animal kingdom after all. Every feral point spent provides a plus one die bonus to a dominance roll. Nine steps in and I think Fanny's coming along nicely. There is a strict hierarchy in the tribes of Paradise Valley, and unfortunately for Fanny, she's at the bottom of it. As a youngster, she only starts with a rank of two, and her role as a scavenger subtracts one from that, 
for a total of rank 1. This rank value is used when one mutant animal attempts to force his will upon another. By way of comparison, an elder seer starts with a rank of 9. Alright, so here we are at step 11, and this is the one where collaboration with the other players is important. I'm going to say this every time, but I love this step and I wish every game incorporated something like it. In step 11, you develop a relationship between your character and each of the other player characters in the group, as well as with two non-player characters. When you select the role for your character, there are a few example relationships provided, however, personally, I'm a fan of players discussing and coming up with their own relationships. This relationship is usually only one sentence, not some crazy long backstory, and can be as vague or as specific as the Game Master allows. Remember, this is a tool to facilitate role-playing. And like all relationships in life, it can and probably will change over time. As you can see, I created relationships between Fanny05 and three example player characters. Josephus, a mutant human chronicler from Mutant Year Zero, Fritz, NEC-099, a security robot from Mutant Mechatron, and Kayala, Fortescue officer from Mutant Elysium. After Fanny, Fritz, and Kayala complete what I call the prequel adventures provided in their respective books, they can join Josephus in the zone and adventure together. I chose Josephus as Fanny's buddy because she's young, probably insecure, and is going to buddy up with someone who treats her a bit nicer than a security robot and a military officer. Plus, he tends to regale her with stories of what her trinkets may have meant or accomplished in the old age. Okay, so that settles the player character relationships. Now we have two non-player character relationships to determine. We need one NPC Fanny hates, and one NPC Fanny wants to keep safe. Where the PC relationships are discussed between the players, the NPC relationships are discussed with the Game Master. I intentionally left the name of the two NPCs blank, but you can see the reasons for Fanny's feelings towards each one. Ultimately, relationships are not difficult to figure out, and they add an interesting and meaningful aspect to the game. Let's finally finish this slide with Step 12. In Step 12, we determine Fanny's big dream. Something she wants more than anything in the world. When you're on the bottom, you have nowhere to go but up. Fanny wants to find a cache of goods from the old age that she can share with her friends so they can all live a better life. Your character's big dream should be a lofty goal, one that keeps him or her adventuring. Alright, only two quick steps left. In step 13, we determine the character's gear. Like many of the other steps in this process, we'll look at the character's role. The scavenger starts with a d6 rations of food, a d6 rations of water, one random artifact, and a knife, a club, or a slingshot. I rolled two rations of food, four rations of water, a pair of boxing gloves, and I picked the slingshot, since it seemed the most appropriate. Normally, Fanny's Strength of 3 would allow her to carry a total of 6 regular sized items, or 6 lines of items as I call it, after which she becomes encumbered. However, the Scrounger talent allows her to use her Wits attribute, which is a 5, instead of her Strength attribute for purposes of encumbrance. This means she can carry 10 regular sized items, or 10 lines of items. 4 rations of food or water count as one regular item, therefore 4 rations of water take up one full line on the character sheet. 2 rations of food or water count as a light item or a half line item, so her food only takes up half of the line. I could place another light item on that same line if I had one. After jotting those down, Fanny still has the ability to carry 17 light, 8 regular, or 4 heavy items, after which she will finally be encumbered. She really does know how to scavenge and scrounge. If you're wondering why you don't see the boxing gloves on the screen, well, let's skip ahead to the final step, step 14, and describe Fanny's den. The Rat Tribe's outpost is located in the Rat Castle at the bottom of Paradise Valley. It's in this building near the collapsed corner where Fanny shaped the rubble and detritus into a makeshift room. It's about as secure as it can be in an overpopulated building full of rats, mice, and hamsters. And this is where I placed her boxing gloves until she decides what's to do with them. With the exception of the collaborative step, step 11, creating a character in Mutant Gen Lab Alpha is pretty straightforward. 
There's a couple of more considerations than Mutant Year Zero, such as animal type, animal powers, age, and rank, but all told, you can create a GenLab Alpha character in just a few minutes, even considering the relationship. Now it is time for Fanny 05 to join the Resistance and fight for her freedom in Paradise Valley. While we move on to the next character, Fritz, NEC-099, the security robot from Mutant Mechatron. If you like this character creation video and want to see more of them, please scrounge up that like button and leave a substantive comment below. I'd be grateful for a super thanks. Subscribe to Legion of Myth for more tabletop RPG videos and to be notified of our RPG Digest and Friday Night Chill Streams. And help us reach 4,000 subscribers so we can have another amazing giveaway. We believe that role-playing games should take place in fantastic worlds and that the focus of any tabletop group should be on role-playing and having a good time. Thus, the core values of hashtag RPGate are escapism, not representation, entertainment over activism, and natural, organic inclusion, not forced diversity. Thank you very much and I hope you have a wonderful day.